Okay, people, so I'm working here. See this camera, right? I don't know. I don't want it to fall. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do e-filing here so I can e-file, I guess, these PDF files to the courthouse. And it required a BCID. You have to go onto the government website and make an application for a subscription. But because I have the foundation and I've been working on the foundation all these years, I already had one. So I had to dig that up. I found it. I don't always find these things, right? <clears throat> and, uh,. I plugged in, you know, whatever I had there, and it hooked me in. So I was already kind of registered with. It wasn't just. It wasn't that difficult. That's what I'm trying to say. So. I haven't quite figured out how to do an e-file yet, to transfer over files. But. As I'm doing this. You know. The foundation stuff popped up through my BCID for the computer, right? And I'm like just sitting here, people, shaking my head because, like, seriously, man, like, you know, I, I'm going like this. It, not only am I reading like this on black and white paper, but I'm having to go like this on the computer, too, right? It's like, this is not easy. And I. Hold on a minute. Okay, as I was saying, Because it brought up because it brought up the nonprofit stuff and the last time I logged on and all that stuff. The first thing that I thought of people is it took me back to the day when that teacher in kindergarten smacked Shimei's face. And that was when I was just really trying to start working on the nonprofit, and you know I was so gung ho to be positive and bring in a universal school meal program right across the province, take it across Canada, do school restoration in the United States of America. Hey, hey, <laughs> you know, like seriously, talk about being so naive. But anyway. <laughs> I guess it was those flying dreams that I used to have when I was younger or when I walked off that that high rise and I was just levitating <laughs> and everybody rich or poor were just looking at me levitate. Maybe that's why I felt that I could accomplish such a great grand goal. So anyway, she may get smacked on the face. She won't go to school. I go talk to the principal. I know, and nah, 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 nah. he goes, nah, 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 nah. and I'm like, okay. He goes, well, you know, she's lying, and you know, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I say, no, 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 she's not going to lie about something like that. She loves school, people, okay? This was going into the ninth month, all right? So why all of a sudden would she just dig her heels into the ground and just refuse to go to school unless she was telling me the truth? And that's what I told the principal. So I said, to heck with this. I'm pulling her out of school. So that was the first time I pulled her out of school. And I you know, I, I kind of wanted to sue them, but I had the nonprofit in mind. I didn't want to bring scandal. This is the first thing that I'm thinking of as I'm registering for a description on the government website so that I can access their court files or do e transfers, like e filing, right? E filing, right? And pay to be able to do that because they won't take it through the court registry. First thing that pops into my mind, <coughs> I don't want to bring scandal to the non nonprofit. I didn't want to bring in a court case to bring scandal to the nonprofit. Well, let's just fast forward now 20, how many years later, okay, because I don't remember exactly what year that was when Shimei was in kindergarten. But besides that point, you know, I'm like, and I'm, I'm sitting here, right? And I'm, I'm like, I'm shaking my head. And I'm like, well, there you go, Judy. There you go. You ended up 
having to do what you needed to do even though you never did want to bring scandal to the foundation and here you are suing the government not once not why well, I can't say CIBC is a government but it works in partnership with the government right you know Fraser Health is definitely government you know uh, two different ministries in terms of the Attorney General the Solicitor and Attorney General right you know and, and I'm like I guess it was just meant to be, right? You know, if that was the case, I should have taken that teacher to freaking court back in the day when she smacked Shimei on the face and held that freaking principal to account for all the drama that ended up materializing over the years. But you see, that's the thing. People haven't, people haven't wanted this, this foundation to be successful because... It, it, it provides a means for the community, wherever that community is, to not rely on government so much to do everything for them. Right? If there's money in the bank to feed kids, and you don't have to ask somebody to spend the money, you can just spend the money and build in the program, and then, of course, follow the codes and all this other stuff when it's, you know, comes to rules and regulations and, you know, kitchens and blah, 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 right? And food safe. And, I mean, obviously, there's some kind of rules in there. But if you've got $100,000 to set up a kitchen and make it functional so that you can feed the kids in the community via through a school meal lunch program because that's the greatest need, because at that time, I phoned up like a whole bunch of schools before I finally finished registering the trademark and, 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 and doing the constitution and all this other stuff. My goal was to reach the most kids that I could possibly reach so that through that reaching out to the most kids, I could reach into the United States of America and reach those kids too. So I chose to phone the school systems. I've mentioned this before in my videos in the past and in, you know, in BC, and I called up like seven different districts, spoke to seven different people, I'll just use that for an example, and every last one of them that worked within the system said that if anyone was to do anything for the kids, it was to try and bring in a, school, uh, like a, 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 a consistent, um, reliable school meal program. So that's how the foundation came about, people. Okay? That's right, Amari. And, uh, so, you know, it wasn't like I just sat here and, oh, this is what I want to do. No, this is what people told me that it's what they needed. And that was in 2000 and 2001. We're in now 2022 with high inflation, unaffordable rents, people losing their jobs, people stuck with stagnant wages, just, okay? So if we ever needed such a program, we need it now. And like I did, I jumped through so many hoops, people, to avoid, to avoid conflict with my governments, whether municipal or provincial, or I don't want to say federal, but yeah, even federal, in terms of, you know, I tried to keep up where I could keep up with the paperwork, you know, um, I didn't, I didn't put no applications in for grants, depending on that system in order to promote my system. I tried to create an independent system that could provide for itself in partnership with the government. So if the foundation came up with a million dollars, the government should come up with a million dollars. That gives us two million dollars to bring in a universal school meal cr program acr across, across the province. And with the government and the people, then the federal government should throw in a million dollars. So that's three million dollars. That was my thinking through the whole process, right? But the thing is, the people that control the economy, they don't want that to happen. Whether it's the politicians within their various ministries, with their portfolios, and their public union sector employees, and they want to keep all the money basically for themselves and keep control of what is being done in the community, or it's that organized religion that basically owns half of this province, if not more people, in terms of assets, land, houses, 
Oh, jeez. Hold on a minute. Tisha's getting me some jars because I bought some back in the videos when I was doing that food prep last year. I bought the or I, I bought the the just the regular cornmeal at 25 pounds per box. I gave 25 pounds to Tisha and I had 25 pounds times two, so 50 pounds for me. And then I said at some point in the future I'm going to get 50 pounds of organic cornmeal, which I have sitting now here in my house. It's just I don't want to put them in in bags and and vacuum seal or. You know, I don't, I don't want them in buckets. I don't want, I want them in glass. I want them in glass. So I ordered myself some big ass jars, and and then Tisha's at Canadian Tire, so she's gonna buy buy me two cases of the 1.2 uh, sized liter jars, so that I can put this stuff away because I still have two boxes of wheat that I still have to put away, people. Now that'll be like that will be a video for the good old days, right? Because when you can, you want to top off a little here and top off a little there because we're not really feeling a food sh quote unquote sh shortage at this point because a lot of the stuff that's in the grocery stores are from last year's production. Okay? So as the economy is shutting down in different areas, for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, because of the cost of diesel and gas and you know lack of finding qualified workers or maybe people just don't want to work or you know or they can't you know the farmers aren't planting the fields and they can't get the fertilizer and just the whole nine yards right you know over the next year or two there is going to be more shortages so i'm like stocking up on corn quote unquote more corn because that's where the calories are in terms of always a Mario on my mind so after I get you know cut up with this stuff a little bit of yard stuff clear out you know put this stuff away we're gonna start experimenting with um, cornmeal and I've got a recipe book here I don't know where it is right now of course I can't see it Oh, here it is. Because I don't eat cornmeal. <laughs> I don't... My, at Christmas time, my, my grandma used to make something with cornmeal for Ukrainian Christmas or something like that. And I, I never liked it. So because of it, I never really ever cooked with it. Apparently, Tisha cooks with it. She makes cornmeal. I, for myself, I think I'd rather have it sweeter. Or maybe in this situation... Do you see? mixed in with something else and there's quite a few recipes in here where you can incorporate cornmeal so that's going to be when we work on a Mari side dish and that kind of stuff right on our more fun videos if and when right you know I'm still in the rape room people okay it's hard to be fun when you're in that type of situation but I'm not in there by myself so you know we stick together and we'll get through it, right? So anyway, Tisha's buying me some jars and I just got another four more big gallons so I can just put everything into a jar after the jars are clean and get them out and, you know, and just, yeah. So, but eventually, it's not gonna, be, like, I go on these websites where I order in bulk like that and they're, like, they're, you know, they're getting more and more out of stock. So, you know, if you can swing an extra 50 bucks or 70 bucks or whatever it is, I highly recommend that you do that because over the next couple of years, not, as, not only is it becoming more expensive, right? Like it costs, like I noticed Amazon is charging now for delivery. I bought four jars, one gallon jars. What, last year, I bought more than four, but anyway, they were coming in, what was it, anywhere between $63 and $72 per box. Now it's $80, okay? As if I need more jars like I need a hole in the head. But for organic, organic cornmeal, you know, I just think that's the best way to preserve it long term. 
and same with the two boxes of wheat that I have. So I'm hoping between these jars, I, I still won't have enough jars. But it will definitely help. It will get rid of a few, at least something. And then the rest, will. I'll just cross that bridge when I get to it. But the point is, you know, this is the time when we should be thinking about a universal school meal program. and But I'm at the end of my rope with this foundation, people. I'm not getting any help. I'm just not. And it's not, like, because they don't, because the people around me don't care, right? They, they, when the immigrants come into the country, before they'll jump on the bandwagon with the collective, they're going to jump on the bandwagon with their ethnic group. And they're going to support each other as a group. The Muslims support the Muslims. The Hindus support the Hindus. The Fijians, they support the Fijians. The Filipinos support the Filipinos. The Chinese support the Chinese. The Punjabis support the Punjabis. The Catholics support the Catholics. <laughs> In terms of white people, right? You, you know, I, I, right? <laughs> And even if they were a Christian and they were all from every other group, they'd still migrate to their ethnic group and help their ethnic group before they'd jump on and help the collective people. Especially when you've got the politicians sabotaging your foundation because they see it as a direct threat to their ministries and, their, and, and those portfolios that are co connected to those ministries. Or they don't want to make the financial investment into a foundation such as mine that's been run by a president such as me where they don't have absolutely 100% control. Or you're dealing with a Punjabi community basically that owns half of this province if not more that are happy with the status quo in terms of it's business as usual for them, but it boils down to that caste system where everybody else on this side of the fence, it's a sink or swim. So as we sink and swim, the ones that control the province are going like this. So that gap is getting wider and wider and wider. And over the years, I, you know, I got cut off of welfare in 2003. I didn't know how to dispute it. I was in a different mindset. I'm like, okay, whatever, right? It's the government. They know what they're doing, right? What am I going to do, right? I was working, just getting into the foundation. I didn't want to bring scandal to it. You know, I felt really good about it. So I went off and worked hard and did this and, you know, did what I needed to do in order to try and make it make movement forward. I met different politicians. I put applications in for 50-50s. You know, I put applications in in front of the city for, for you know, extended hours of operations to bring in a 50-50 for a year to make over $100,000. It was all freaking denied, people. And that was to help to with homeless people and feeding people and all that other stuff. Homeless youth, high-risk youth, they turn their backs on high-risk youth. We're not surprised, people. Because it's poverty pimping. So, after 22 years of being around a whole bunch of poverty pimps, I'm at the end of my rope with this foundation, and I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this stuff, and this is the point of this video. I'm like, oh, okay, so now the government is really is up in their face. It's one thing putting, putting, putting the information in, in black and white, because I, I put information in there regarding HSBC Bank and, uh, what is it called, uh, Van City, that relates directly to the foundation. It, Van City takes it back to 2001. HSBC documents Uncle John signing his signature before he went into that freaking ambulance in a non-emergency phone call, okay? Even though I could have taken him to the doctor in my car because I went off after I was done being somewhat sick. I was sick for a week, people. I slept for a week. Uncle John was holding down the fort. When I started coming out of whatever this flu was, I was shaky. 
And I said, gee, John, this is not a good, good flu. I'm going to go get the car insured because the car was off the road, right? I walked and I was sick. I was shaky, but I wasn't sleeping no more. Eh? I went and got the freaking car insurance. And I said, you know, John, if you start showing signs, I'm taking you to the doctor. I think we need to go, right? And sure enough, not even a day, two days later, because he, he was holding down the fort, people. It caught up to him. He was the last one to get it. I could have taken my car and drove him to the doctor's office and say, hey, what's wrong with him? But I didn't want him to sleep on me for a week, people, and die on me from dehydration. So that's why we decided, him and I talked. He was still cognitive, okay? We talked, and we made the right decision for him. But before he left, I can show you the paper, but before he left, I said, gee, John, you know, we got these counts, blah, 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 right? Because I'm not getting no fucking help with my community, boo-boo community, right? You know, they're going dormant, they're inactive, right? You need to sign this, because I'm in the middle of doing this paperwork with H. HSBC Bank and uh, management, management, right, in, in regards to these accounts. So he put his John Henry on there, and I said, okay, kids gave him a shower, and we gave him soup, and, you know, we told him we loved him, and then we called a non-emergency ambulance line. They came, they asked what was going on, we told them, they loaded him up into the freaking ambulance, and they took him away. And then, when they took him to the hospital, they had him in a hall with a whole bunch of other gurneys for about two, three days before they finally moved him upstairs. But by that time, it was too late, people, because they were already starting to drug him. As I've got the social worker waiting for me to show up and then asking me to start paying for convalescent care before she even told me what the heck was wrong with him in terms of why he was even there outside of he had a flu because he developed a bit of delirium and that's what provoked us to have him go because I didn't understand that elderly people when they get flus and stuff like that especially if they get lung infections can and if they you know get a little dehydrated which he was because he was drinking coffee looking after the house looking after Andre while I was sleeping hmm anyway the point is I don't get no help with the foundation people. I really don't. So with that said, I don't know if it's even viable to keep having it and keep paying, paying, paying. Like I'm up due for my trademark. If I don't, you know, I got till December. I got a six month grace period. I was up in June last month, right? My my grace period is up in December for the United States of America to re-register for another 10 years. I don't know if I want to spend $3,200 on that. For nothing. For nothing, people. For nothing. As I continue to pay for the website, as I continue to pay for filing fees, and all this other crap, well, everybody else around me is just going on about business as usual as they ignore the criminal activity that goes on in this community, in this province, in this country, that is on the precedence, that set on the precedence of a caste system because of organized religion that's in partnership with a government that's gone rogue. A government that's gone rogue, people. When Uncle John worked for the government for all those years, the government, oh, I don't know. Uncle John said when they'd have their little parties, it was pretty bad when he had to go in there and clean up after them. But other than that, they had integrity, people. Okay? But something's changed. Something's changed. And we know it's changed. So, why am I wasting money on a general population that doesn't give a crap about my family or anybody's family for that matter unless of course they're exactly like them when it comes to their ethnic kind and even then when they're their ethnic kind if they don't have the right amount of money
to meet whatever it is that these people think that buys them superiority? Okay? It's beyond white privilege, people. Then they, they browbeat them and mistreat them as well. And I seen that with Sarah and that little girl that I was looking after. Okay? That's when my eyes were really opened to the Punjabi community and how they look after their own when um, they fall under that caste system. She was Tamil. She wasn't Punjabi. She wasn't Hindu. She was Tamil. And not only was she Tamil, but she suffered from a mental illness, and therefore she became a castaway. Okay? So the ones that think that they're superior can prosper. But the ones that are struggling and falter, well, you, they're just on that plank. On that plank. You know, the slave ship plank. That plank where you just eventually get pushed out to sea and fed to the sharks. So it isn't necessarily anything to do with skin color. Because Sarah was a homeowner too. Now mind you, it was just a half of a duplex. It wasn't a monster home. But the point is, is she had the Canadian dream. But it was the Canadian government who failed her right along with the Canadian community. Okay? And that was in 2007, 2008, 2006. When did I move into Sarah's? 2003. 2003, 4, 5, 6. Hold on a minute. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to finish this video. Uh, I don't know what I was saying other than I'm at the end of my rope. You know... Tens of thousands of dollars later, hundreds of thousands of hours later, loss of life later, being sabotaged, gang stalked, targeted later, you know, I just don't know if it's even reasonable to even think That it's, you can do anything in this province. Or anywhere else you go for that matter. Right? In terms of, if you want to keep it really small and simple and start a little non-profit to, heck, cats get more support than human beings. <laughs> right? And even then, if you start a non-profit to help support cats, rescue cats, or whatever it is with cats, you've got the other non-profits competing with you before you even come out the door because they're not going to want to share that dollar. Right? And when you got people like the Duncan clan, you see, that's the thing. They had the information to the non-profit. Years before John inherited that money, people. Because one year the kids took him over or he went over or whatever year, I don't know. I just know that here, John, here's the envelope with all the information to the nonprofit. Take it to your family. And maybe your family will help. Maybe your family will help, being that you helped to found it, John. I didn't say it like that. We were, we did it with goodwill and in good faith but the family took the information sat on it did nothing with it and then in the end like Uncle John predicted went out of their way to sabotage it and destroy it and they didn't care who they hurt how they hurt them or the consequences around that hurt as in death. That's what I'm up against. 
in this province, people. Because if Uncle John would have gotten that entitlement that he deserved in terms of his inheritance, not only would he have gotten a nice place to live with a walk-in shower and anything else that he needed along the way, but we definitely would have worked on the foundation and brought it to a whole new level. But the ones that control the economy, that pay out the bribes, and do criminal activity so that they can get richer, and those on the other side of the fence just keep on spiraling down because somehow they're never meant to succeed in life, well, they made sure that the nonprofit had amounted out to nothing. But it's interesting, after all this time, how I tried to prevent the nonprofit from being exact, exact, directly up in the government's face in terms of smacking my daughter when she was in kindergarten to the point where she wouldn't go back to school and then had the balls to turn around and accuse her of lying so that you could protect the corrupt teacher. Well, it's like it's come full freaking circle. Only this time, I'm not protecting the foundation people. And that's the point of this video. There is no foundation. The government ruined that a long freaking time ago when they had me going from one MLA to another MLA to an... Go talk to Bruce Ralston, okay? How about that one? There's a few other ones in there that are still working for the government back in the day when the B.C. Liberal government was in power for, what, how many years? 16 freaking years? What the hell do you think I was doing? I was being a hot potato between the two parties. But, <laughs> it's staring them in the face now. <laughs> it's, just, it's just ironic that it's staring them in their face. Because when I started the nonprofit, the NDP was in power. And I was proud to be a Canadian. And I was proud to live in British Columbia, Canada, with a strong public union sector. Otherwise, I would never have done what I did. But little did I know that something was going to infiltrate our parliament buildings and our municipalities and so on and so on to the point where it's a living freaking hell now. It's worse than the new Congo. But for them, on this side of the fence, that want to get richer and 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 richer with bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger ego, ego, egos, it's like water off a duck's back. It means nothing to them. Doesn't matter what sacrifices my family made or I made to even speak of a foundation. And that's why. I don't know how far I want to carry on with it anymore, especially with this shit going on. And the fact that the Punjabi community, the one that I mainly live in, is so apathetic with anything outside of itself when it comes to freaking society. Okay. I can't ask them to help. I can't, people. I've been asking. And it falls on deaf ears.